know, please, guys, tell us something. Do you see yeah. as well? Yeah. So, regards once again from Finland. This is Kari from Urban Mill. I'm now sitting at my home, and I will introduce you uh, Jarmo Suominen, friend of mine and, and colleague of mine. So, Jarmo has been a long time an entrepreneur. He is an architect. He used to work at Alta University, there on the architectural department, but then also was starting uh, education in, in China, Shanghai, Tongji University as an Alta person. And then another life he has had in MIT Media Laboratory in the US. There he has been working with the City Science Lab. Uh, at the Urban Mill, we supported him and the Alta University when they have uh, created new uh, services. One of those is school as a school as a service model, which mm -hmm. was done together with the Alta University Properties City of Espo, and uh, Jarmo was facilitating it. Now, some of those people who worked at Alta, they had a startup tractor where uh, uh, Jarmo is also a co-founder. But that's something uh, background. So, uh, Jarmo, if you can start now and tell a little bit more if I, I forget something and tell how we will proceed. Okay, thank you, Kari. Um, yes, so, so my background, as, as Kari mentioned, I'm an architect. I'm a, starting from academia. I have my architectural office. But 20 years ago, I went to MIT and I realized uh, something different in architects. It became not as an object for me, but as a platform for interaction. Um, and that leads me to this point where I, I'm going to show you some of the ideas, projects we've done in the beginning, which leads them to this tractor, this company. And um, the reason I'm talking about tractor is also, I'm not trying to, to advertise the company to you, but that was the direct connection based on my research, based on what I have done, that leads to the commercialization of that. That's why it's kind of essential part of this. Um, and what else? I'm, um, it's really about the, the, the presentation, really about the, uh, the environment for innovation. Um, and what does this mean? I, I can go through it now. And as, as Olga was saying, um, I try to, to keep this in three different uh, sections. So feel free to ask questions during the time and we stop after, after each of the section. But maybe I, I just start to, to, to show what, what, uh, what, what, uh, is, uh, what we have done. As showing kind of introduction, the, the project Kari was mentioned already in the beginning. But first, I would like to, to let me see. Yes, a couple of words about innovation. Um, and I'm not going to talk about innovation as such. I'm talking about innovation environments, but, but these four diagrams maybe give you some background. Each of them requires sometimes that you enlarge your environment, you, you are connected to other, other stakeholders, sometimes you go back to your internal process. And I'm, as I'm looking at the environment, uh, I'm really interested about how to, to, to actually enable this um, extension of the process how to enable innovation ecosystems in the physical world. Uh, I don't need to go to it uh, to inside of this uh, process itself, but the idea that innovation requires different competencies and different stakeholders. And that is one of the key components of the presentation. Um, but the problem is that these stakeholders are usually isolated, independent, not connected in the physical world. They might be connected in the, the, the online or through the processes, but they own their own premises and their own kind of um, environment. And um, that actually leads to, to many different uh, uh, questions that I could come back to later. But then the third thing is that, sorry about the quality of this video, uh, this old video, but I think it's very um, enlightening. The third thing is that we actually could identify how people use environment. And we could think about a kind of physical environment as a, as a operating environment, operating system. But it, it enables us to do certain things and it prevents us to do certain things. And in this case, this is the analysis of how people use the environment. And then we could identify, based on different colors, different ecosystems. They could be housewives or, or business people. They could be students. But 
But each of these cases, they form some, some kind of group or ecosystem which are using then in real life certain environments. This case in San Francisco, this was done 2008, but I think it still uh, kind of captured the point that uh, it's really certain things happen in certain places. And, and if you think any of these ecosystem, let's say the red ecosystem, we try to think about that as a, as a, as a network of places and I don't care about that somebody owns this building, another person owns that building. I, I care about how to enable this network to work. Um, and then maybe I could go more uh, kind of a little bit theoretical slides. So the idea of the focus of the environment is that uh, most of the cases when we build environments, we focus on internal efficiency. You think about any factory, hospital, school, uh, even university, each department tried to focus on how, how could they be uh, efficient. Uh, that leads to isolation. That leads to that uh, my, my environment could be uh, perfect, but it doesn't have any connections to outside. And so my focus is on effectivity inside and on the ecosystem. And then is another thing is the structure of the environment. Um, so people like to have control and 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 predictions. So they like to have static environment, but flexible adaptable structures are, are much, much more difficult to manage and maintain. So usually uh, we end up here in this corner that we build something in the beginning, it's efficient, but it creates a, I can say a prison of, or kind of barriers around it. And I call this product logic that the value is in the building or value is in the environment. I could even push it to be more internally flexible but in this efficient side, it's really about internal flexibility. What I'm interested about this external flexibility, effectivity, impact of the environment. And this means that I could either invite people to use my environment, or I could use the environment in much more open and, and, and sustainable ways. And my presentation is basically really about this, how, to, how, how can we integrate the environment, different stakeholders, different uh, kind of uh, organizations regarding the innovation ecosystems. Uh, I, I try to oversimplify this with four slides. So this was the old working environment, isolated standalone, fixed environment. Uh, this is more modern uh, office environment, which is flexible inside, but still have barriers uh, in the, the perimeter. Then this is the co-working environment, which is open to, to external players. It, it's open to, to others to use the environment, but we still, we are in control. And this is what I call the open innovation uh, environment that uh, the, the, it creates an ecosystem within the current uh, uh, buildings or, or build systems. Um, maybe all this sounds still a little bit theoretical, but let me go back to the, the example of this uh, school that Kari was mentioned. Before that, I say that this is, exclusive, the first version, and I'm talking about inclusive environments that, that enables us to create value together. Um, so now I'm talking about this, this cool project, which was, uh, which was started actually already 2014 in a couple of research projects, developed further and open in 2016, so four years ago. Uh, and the idea that uh, if I start about school as a product, that's almost any school in the world. So that this is something that you collect all the, the features of the school inside the, the, the building. You, you invest on gyms and, and labs and etc. I call it product innovation. The school could be fantastic as a product. But what we propose that what if the school is embedded to the environment? You have the service platform and service system that school is using the resources of the environment it still has it hard, but hard could be much more, sm uh, much smaller, but it, it, it's dependent of the, the, these services. And the outcome of that, I will come back to that to later, but it's, it's like, a, like, a, like a going back to the, the past that we, the whole village is creating value together. It creates new markets to different entrepreneurs to support new, new type of services. It creates new opportunities to, to, to actually connect the different stakeholders together. Um, and this small diagram is maybe the, the core part of the, the idea of this innovation environment that um, 
I could not push people to innovate together, but I could create the environment that enables them to share the resources in totally new ways. And, in, and as a consequence of this, if I go back to this, this school as a product, if I want to work with you guys, I don't, I don't need to invite you to my premises, my environment. I could actually use the, the environment for having these neutral platforms for us to, to, to do something together. And Urban Meal is, of course, one of these neutral platforms. I see Urban Meal as here, as, as one of these resources, which are actually the new type of um, uh, urban planning as well, as a requirement. So why does this make sense in, in practice as well? So traditional uh, solutions are, as an architect, I build a building. I predict, I, I, I plan it based on what I, what I know, and I, I plan this more static uh, solution. The risk of, of, of sorry, the risk of that is quite high because planning risk because I don't know I need to plan something uh, based on 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 my my current knowledge but life is changing quite rapidly so I don't know what are the, the future kind of demands flexibility the low and usage are quite low but in the case of this network the risk of uh, targeting right uh, kind of solution is much lower because it's dynamic network is dynamic. And if I could manage the real estate portfolio in this way, uh, my, my opportunities of uh, creating a more sustainable solution based on, on, on the, the investment, but also ecological and, and kind of intellectual sustainability are much higher. And later on, I will, I will show you the, 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 our company tractor. But basically, if you want to manage this portfolio of real estate, um, you need to have new tools, new type of approaches. And, and in this way, we could actually create um, networks, virtual networks, regardless of the physical environment. So the school or the hospital, any innovation ecosystem, any organization could use the resources in new ways. And one way to explain this is, uh, I, I sometimes I call it like Airbnb for institutions. You all know Airbnb, it's a, it's a consumer product. If you, if you need a room for today or tomorrow, that's okay, you call them, or you look at the website, and if, if that's not possible, you go to booking.com or wherever. But in the institutional case, the time span is one year, 10 year, much longer. So, so the, the whole approach, even the concept is the same, you need to think about long term. And if you, if you create a school like this, you need to think about that uh, it's not only tomorrow or next week, but the school need to have the restaurant or uh, gym for one year or two years from now on. So the whole practic practicalities are different, even the concept is, is, is the same. Um, and then before I, I have a, uh, the first break for questions, I will show this, this uh, first case of how can I look here that we start 2015. Uh, later on, I will go to more complicated uh, kind of examples, but this is a very sim kind of simplified idea of what, 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 what I try to tell you. Uh, so we identify this autonomy campus, university campus, uh, the school is here, actually urban mill is here. Uh, we identify resources around 10 minutes walking uh, radius around the school. But there are lots of resources in the university campus. Uh, and then we start the neg negotiation process with, with the university, with the university property, properties, with other stakeholders to think about how could we use, how could we utilize this with the university. And these were the, 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 the initial kind of things that we find that we could have these, some of these labs, these uh, kind of restaurants, the gym, the, 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 the sporting facilities around the campus. Um, and this is just a diagram that, okay, uh, it's not only spaces. For example, through this concept, we could offer 14 classes of Chinese language to students. Or this is the distribution, weekly distribution of different resources uh, they are using in the school. So it's not only the, 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 the space, what I'm saying that we put these different competencies together. Once we change the operating system, operating environment, we enable people to work together. And that is my main point of this innovation environment that we, through changing the environment, we could actually uh, push people together. Uh, and from the user satisfaction point of view, this dark green was the uh, is the, the new school, the network, and the light green was the old school, the building. And without going into details, I could say that in every single aspect in parameter that we measure, 
the students were much more happy with the new open network rather than old closed school. They called the school as a prison. And this is that they say that they are part of the society. Finally, they understand the value of the learning. Um, and also the amount of students, they moved to a smaller building and the amount of students almost doubled in, 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 in five years in smaller building because they could use the network. The students are using different resources. And then the minimum average grade that they could get the uh, uh, students in was increasing every single year. So it's much harder to get in, meaning two things, it's even more popular and the quality of students is, is going to increase. And then the, the, as a final, from the fi financial point of view, uh, in every parameter, the, the dark one is the old model, the, the light one is the new model. So every parameter says that this is much cheaper uh, and, and cost efficient way to do it. So my point here is that if it's cheap, if the, the results are better, if the people are more loyal, uh, engaged to it, it might make some sense to, to try uh, in other fields as well. Uh, and the summary, so this carbon footprint, it's more sustainable. It's a, it has a more economic value. It attracts more people and it's more flexible. Uh, and the reason I'm, I'm showing this is that, that that was the first kind of a wake up call for me to realize that this model is something worthwhile of trying. And the reason we haven't tried it before because we haven't got the technology before. I could say only 10 years before now or eight or seven years, we have all these platform technologies and practices that we could actually use the environment in different ways. And, and after this, they established a second, second school, uh, which are using the, the, the network of autonomy in new ways. And this is the last slide of the first section. So you don't need to, to believe me. So this is actually, uh, there have been 10 innovation awards regarding to this or connected to this that have been awarded for this. So, so this was kind of a, uh, experience that, oh, wow, well, we propose a new way of how we use environment, innovation of use that leads to innovation of uh, sustainability, economically and innovation activities that make sense. And, 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 and yeah, that was the biggest learning for that. Uh, and then before going to next phase, which is really, we establish a company based on this. I would like to, to have a small talk or discussion or questions uh, if anybody has anything in your mind at this point. Is there any questions or comments or uh, notions? Uh, yes, Yarmo, there is uh, some <laughs> comments in the chat. You can read it or you, we can open this. Um, just I saw the question from uh, Vladimir. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, Vladimir, are you here? Oh, chat here, yeah, okay. Yeah, Vladimir. Oh, okay. Yes. Uh, uh, yes, really... yes. I'm yes. here. I'm here. Yeah. Can you can you yes, do this me, question? Uh, the question is just if this slide deck would be published, yes, that I could sure. share it. Yes. yes. Thank you. Yes. Uh, I mean, almost every slide is. Uh, I mean, uh, Kari and Oda has the the shared uh, deck already. Yeah, yeah. We have we have the presentation, and uh, yes. you can uh, take it in the Moodle. Yes. Yeah. Okay, Let's thanks. Start. Thank you. Um, and of course, I, I could continue if, if this seems to be quite clear, because I think it was important for me to, to, that you get the feel, understanding why we are doing things like this. So the school was just the first example. Jarmo, I ask yes. you one question. Yes, please. What did you find the most difficult thing when you there is the local efficiency, which is normally the way how different players mm. act. But now you are doing differently. What was the most difficult and how did, did you handle it to get started? Um, that was a good question because there are many difficulties. But the biggest diffic difficult was the, the, the most difficult thing was that it was something new that people didn't expect. I mean, real estate is the, one of the, the most old fashioned environment in the world, I could say the business environment, um, because of the size and because of the volume of the money. So everybody was, was kind of focused on, on maintaining their own portfolio. Uh, and this model that enables us to focus on use rather than ownership uh, was, was very new. But eventually, 
we have we have, we face problems in every level. Uh, very practical things in the school. The city of Espoo was saying you can, you cannot plan a school if if it hasn't been planned in the urban planning phase. So we put a school somewhere that it hasn't been planned. But all these were kind of minor issues. I think the biggest problem was the mindset. That once you get the logic, once you get the idea, to, okay, wow, it's innovation of use rather than innovation of ownership. People start to understand it. And I sometimes I say that it's a, it's like if I have green glasses and I change that, that them to, to, to red glasses, everything is the same, but everything looks different. And this is a, I believe you don't need to, to, to believe me, but I think that this is a paradigm change that will allow us to be more sustainable and, and integrated in the future rather than building environments, we use them in different ways. And maybe did, it, yes. did it help you? You worked first with the Royal College of Arts and you brought them to Finland to do some work in this. So it was greener, the grass on the other <laughs> side of the thing. You know Finnish people, Kari. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I use I use every single single thing I, I can in the beginning, uh, and it also was helpful to to know the mayor of, of Espo, and it was eventually him who said that okay, I trust this first idea, let's try it. And I I think I, I want to say that at this point I've been talking now around the world about this, and people ask why Finland, uh, why not in in USA or or China in the first place. And I think fin Finland has the culture of trust. So we could trust that uh, this idea, let's try it. Uh, but, uh, but even in USA, in, in Boston or, or in MIT environment, there's no trust. I mean, so you need to prove that before. And we didn't have any proof of concept before. Uh, and how we convince people um, was like this. So first of all, we need to convince them by by saying, let's try this. If it doesn't work, we disappear. If it works, we will continue. Uh, and, and surprisingly, it works better than, than any one of us could have expected. In terms of as I mentioned, satisfaction, in terms of money, in terms of sustainability. Um, and uh, yeah, but it, the first phases was done purely by hand. We, we call these building owners, we call these professors, we call these people, could we use your space? Could we put students there? And in other campus, there was first people that, oh, no, no, we don't have high school students. We could, we cannot have them now, or the, the mix with the, the university students. But now, for example, you can know very well that the schools are now connecting in so many different ways with the university. And even the university is using the school's premises nowadays. Yes. And that actually, that was the most encouraging thing that, uh, that um, when, I, when we start this project five years ago, uh, university has, I will go back to this uh, later, but they have uh, 10 companies in the campus actually. And university was first thinking that they will offer their spaces to the school. But very soon the university properties realized that this model means that they don't need to offer the spaces. They could share the spaces together with companies. And within five years, now the amount of companies in the university campus autonomy is from 10 to almost 200. So they offer this, I call it university membership. They offer this membership to the different companies. The companies could use the university premises without having the headquarters or something like this. So this service model also changed the university strategy. And, and I think that that's also part of the innovation ecosystem. Any single university in the world would love to increase the amount of stakeholders in the campus, I think. Uh, okay, but, but uh, so I go, I go very briefly through this next phase and we can talk, talk um, more after this. Uh, so as I mentioned earlier, so I really look at innovation as activity and operations. I, I, I don't have the power to go inside company and say you need to work in certain ways, but as we need, as we know innovation requires interaction, so we need to create environments that are open to interaction. And, it, and the physical environment is the operating system. It enables us to do certain things or prevents us to do certain things. A service will actually create a flexible and adaptable ecosystem. The reason why the service is important because no company, no university, they, they, they don't have the capability of, of owning or managing this, this network. So this company tractor that we establish uh, uh, 
we were for, almost forced to do that, to, to, be, to, to be able to offer the service that we could manage your network. And some of you might answer why is the, or, 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 or ask, what is the, the name uh, of the company? It's kind of a little bit like a joke, but we want it to be like a tractor, like a workhorse that, that enables this robust process to go on and to go on and to go on because it's a new, new infra. It's not some high-tech device. It's really the new infrastructure that enables us to do the use the environment in a way. So, so this is the basic idea I was explaining earlier that instead of owning the, the everything you need, you own less and you use more. And, and using, you used to own, I mean, I'm oh, sorry, I, I need to check my, my power, yes, now I got charged again. <laughs> uh, so, so this was the old fashioned model because there was no other thing that companies, organizations, they, they need to own their own premises or rent them, they need to lease them. But in this way, we, we transfer square meters to square meters and hours. So you own or, or control this and you use certain amount of hours of the environment. And, and these boxes are something that, um, what happens, so this could be art university or school, so this could be created for private entrepreneurs. So this creates a new market. And, and again, Kari, I'm referring to you, Urban Meal is one example of these things mm -hmm. that enables companies to, to act more openly and more flexible ways. And so you could see yourself as a, as a kind of a forerunner of new market. Uh, and I, I could put co-working places and others there as well. So what I'm saying, using less square meters matters. It matters in, in terms of uh, ecology, sustainable environment, but also it matters in terms of flexibility that you don't need, need to own and control everything. Uh, and this is what we do. We, we think about the innovation ecosystem in the scale of building, in the scale of district, and in the scale of city. Uh, and the simple idea of the school applies to all these different scales. Uh, uh, but this is also why we need to have this uh, uh, service platform, the, the platform to actually enables us to, to collect the resources and match them with the demand. I'm talking about supply and demand. We need to think about what are the demand, what are the supply, and then conclusions what you need to own and control and what you can use. I was having this kind of presentation uh, two years ago in Paris, in France, and the vice mayor of Paris was asking me, how do I see the Paris, future of Paris after 10 years? How do I see that as an architect? And I was saying that I don't see any difference. Paris will, after 10 years, ago, 10 years from now, it will look most like the same as it looks now, the innovation is not how we, how we build it, but innovation is how we use it. And this is really the core, that, the, that what we promote here is the innovation of uses. That we could actually use the environment in much more sustainable ways. Um, and as I mentioned, so this will happen in any scale, inside building, outside building, inside district, outside district, um, in, in new ways. And we could actually, we have the tools we have been creating that we could simulate the outcome. So this is the, the government um, office building in, in Pasila. We could simulate how could they, 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 they decrease the amount of spaces. We could help them to manage the, 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 the network. And we have the app for the users to use the spaces, to make reservations, navigate the spaces. So we could create this virtual office or work environment uh, with our tools already. But this is, again, I, I don't want to push this, the idea for you that it's, it's only our company. I think these are really big, really big paradigm change that there are going to be competitors for us and, and many others to actually uh, try to promote this more sustainable use of environment. And we could think about this activity-based network, activity-based office, uh, which actually gives users freedom of choice. They are not any more prisoners of one institution, one place, um, because they could actually choose whatever fits them, whatever suits them best. And in this time of pandemic or COVID, uh, we are all, most of us are in home. Maybe we are, the new normal is not going to be ever more this that we move to office, 
maybe it's some, somewhere hybrid, somewhere in between, that we move, we, we work one day in home, two days other places, and two days in the office or whatever. It's a combination of places. And um, I, I don't want to say this, but I say it in any case, that some way this COVID has been very good for us because it opened people's eyes. It opens, it's an eye opener that, that this old fashioned real estate model doesn't work anymore. We need to find more flexible ways to use the environment and put people together. So, so one of the slogan or the, the main slogan of our company is coming together. We enable people to come together by changing the environment and, and, and systems to of that. Uh, and as I mentioned, that happens in, in, in different uh, levels of locations. Each of these balloons, uh, bubbles shows one ecosystem existing uh, already working uh, inside different locations. Uh, and here are the, the I'm, I'm not uh, bracking in any way, but here are the client list of what we are working with already. And it shows you the, the kind of quite uh, diverse platform that we have different companies, public services, technology companies, academic environments, building owners. So we already covered the owner, the demand and supply uh, within this one year period. We started one year ago and it already covers quite many of these things. And my dream is to think about uh, the city of Helsinki, for example, in this case, as a service platform that these companies benefit from each other these stakeholders could use each other uh, kind of processes. And again, this image will lead the innovation ecosystem. I'm an architect, I, 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 I'm not an expert in innovation as such, but I'm an expert in environment. And I, I do what I can to change the environment in a way that it could, it could be utilized in that. Uh, so that was the kind of end part of the second session. So if you have any questions or comments, so that was a very brief overview of, of this kind of tools what, or, or methods, how, how can I say, what we're doing. I can, of course, continue, but if there are any, any questions or, or things. Yeah, I had a question. Yes. Because you were talking about the scale of the city. Yes. And uh, so my question is uh, if... Uh, uh, you limit the distance between services to the heart of school or do students go there by foot uh, or they need to take public transport? Very good question. Thank you, because there's a two, two answers for that. In the school case, we limit the distance by, by foot or by bike because it's, uh, it needs to operate in, in kind of a, a very efficient way. But with the companies, we are. I have a slides about working with uh, the big companies in Montreal in Canada. Uh, they don't want to limit the distance based on the kind of immediate uh, uh, distance, immediate scale. They want to think about that. How can we find the places more to the everyday living environments? Meaning that people are living around Montreal, and there are third places. There are places that actually they could use as a small clusters. So this school case only applies for the high school, but if we go to company, the bigger uh, environment, they would like to use the whole city as their platform. I'm not sure if that, that answer your question, or is that okay? Dasha? I have a question. Okay, yes. When you are now working more with the companies, how do they find that impact type of effectiveness thing rather than efficiency? Because in many times yes. in the companies, they try to be efficient. They have KPIs, etc. Yes. Now, as I mentioned earlier, that this COVID has been good for us. Now I could say, I mean, if I li live it, I'm a little bit pushy, but they love it now. They realize that they have huge assets that they could not use. And now finally companies start to understand, okay, this makes sense that we don't need to own and control everything if we could use them. It's the same simple idea that if you don't need to own bicycle if you could use them. If we could guarantee that they could use the resources, they don't want to own, I mean, if they are not really that investors, they don't want a need to own that anymore. Um, and without going into details, we are now uh, working with quite a big clients so like, like Nike or, or Adidas, as well as, as uh, Microsoft, with the campuses in Oregon or Amsterdam, 
that how could they actually minimize the, or optimize the footprint? Uh, and again, um, I'm happy to say this, that this is a big change in the mindset of companies as well. And we are only one player in there, right? but we, we happen to be quite uh, right on time there. But, but again, half a, month, half a year ago, uh, between COVID, before COVID, uh, many answers were, or many companies were saying, wow, this is interesting and we might do something like this in the future. Now the, chain, uh, the tone has changed. Could we, could we deliver this? Could, could they use the environment? Could they, they, they decrease their footprint uh, immediately? Thanks. And uh, Yarbo, I have yes. a question also. Uh, can you guess a new type of services that will emerge in the nearest future? Yes, I mean, so uh, I have these references now, but, uh, but um, it means, again, I have been a couple of times I'm referring to Curry already to Urban Meal. Uh, they are third, third party uh, services. So. They are services that could be offered. Let's say, let's say that um, uh, Fab Lab. So when we start the first school with the University of Alta, it means that Alta will open their Fab Lab to the school. But now there are, there are markets for Fab Labs in between the school and Alta, both are using that. So if you think about that, companies and, and organizations will, will focus on the core function and, and they use the environment in new ways. So this creates opportunity to markets for all kinds of service providers who could put themselves in the um, campus like this or, or the, the network like this. And I truly, truly see that uh, and, and I could share you with some insight. Um, you don't need to take that too seriously, but for example, in Shanghai, we work with Microsoft uh, and they, are, they have a partnership with, with WeWork, the biggest co-working operator in the world. Um, and they are tied with WeWork. They could only use the WeWork spaces as a, as a flexible space environment. Um, but they are also thinking that if we could open the environment from them in, in more open way, they don't want to be tied to any one single operator. They want to have access to the area itself. So the, the logical model is different. So it's, and, and, and it's not any one more player, but if we could offer we could, we could say that this, this area is your playground, this area is your environment. Uh, then you need to have these service platforms that we don't own anything. Nobody is pushing us to, as, as, a, as a company, nobody is pushing us to, to offer this or that space. We are just neutral kind of in between platform that we enable everything. We, we, we are open to, to new, uh, new economy and new stakeholders. We, as a supply, so by your question, Olga, so meaning that uh, anyone who could provide new opportunities, new services, could sign in the pl platform, and anyone who needs these services could actually use them through the platform. And in that way, I was referring to, to Airbnb. The idea is simple, that without knowing you, I could rent your apartment because of the platform. And this just a institutional platform, not commercial, not consumer platform. Okay. If I yeah. Okay, thank you, Yarmo. Thank you. But this, even the idea seems very simple. The reason I have the, my, my co-founders are the, the former CEO, CE, CEO of uh, University Properties and, and, and Director of Investment in University in Real Estate. Because th this world is quite tough. We need to have agreements, negotiation with property owners. Uh, we need to have new type of deals. And it's, it's not easy world, but it's once they realize that something like this will, will change the world, it's surprising how, how, how open people are now to find a new ways of doing this. And even yesterday, I read a art few articles about um, how malls are dying, how department stores are dying, how this old commercial world, world is dying because of many things. Uh, without going into details, the big, big property owners are in trouble. And this creates opportunities for us as well. But the, the really, the, I would like to emphasize the reason why I think about, talk about universities, really the change will happen on the demand side. 
if the demand, I'm saying school, university, company, if they understand that they don't need to own everything, this will change the world. But maybe it's easier to understand through the, the I, I go through the project and references next. Is that okay? What is the time? So we still have 45 minutes around that. Yes, yes, we have time, yeah. Okay, good, good. Um, okay, so let, let me go through this and then we can have a more open discussion. Because again, uh, maybe it's my style. I, I sometimes I feel I'm a little pushy to say this is the future, but, but I believe that this is one part of the future. So I want to have your, 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 your reflection on, on, on how does this, this makes sense. Uh, and as I mentioned, uh, the RT University campus was naturally one of our first target. Uh, and within five years space, we, we have 100,000 reduction in university space, uh, square meters. So, so university was concentrating quite a lot of, of its premises. And that this number leads to quite a big amount of, of new open space for others to utilize. And, and others are different stakeholders, uh, co-working places, uh, co-creation places. Uh, uh, we have the A-grid, the, 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 the kind of startup incubator, lots of different things. And, and that helps companies to, 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 to have this, what, what we call the membership model. So companies could actually use these spaces as a members of all the campus. So because we have so many new uh, kind of um, opportunities, so we can offer them that you pay the membership fee um, and, and, and you could use the laboratories, you could use the third kind of uh, places, different ways. And this model is, don't get me wrong, uh, this model is not perfect by far, but it was good enough to test these ideas. That, okay, wow, this works. Um, and as, as here are some numbers, but it's uh, like 50 large corporate members of the campus, which didn't exist before. Before they have only option to lease the space. Now they get people, now they have the presence in the campus and utilize the environment and work with, comp with university and others. And again, I think these numbers are quite important if you think about innovation ecosystem and maybe the university in heart of that. And this was the idea of the school and service. So, so I, I get, I go through this already before, but these are the premises uh, that they use, urban mill here, uh, uh, startup factory, whatever. So we don't need to go, to, maybe this is not totally up to date, but here you see something interesting. So we could, we could calculate the hours that they could use, the total price, we could give them real numbers. And we have done this work now to the city of Helsinki, and in one school, there are approximately 80, 18,000 hours per year for teaching sessions, one, eight, zero, zero, zero. And we could manage, we could, through the platform, we could actually distribute these hours to the environment in two minutes. <laughs> it calculates quite a lot, but it's, it, it uses the AI to understand, okay, these are available resources, and these are available or, or, or demand we need and we need to, to match them somehow. This first thing was done manually. And also we start this work by thinking that we want to increase the density. But now with COVID, we, we realized that we could also decrease the density. We could manage the density of the environment in the network. It's much harder to do that inside a building, but in the network, we could open up spaces. We could say that these are overused and here are more space to, to you if you're part of the network. If you're part of the building, you don't have any other choice than go inside the building. And this, we are do doing this now in USA, which is actually, unfortunately, I think they are going to have this problem for at least one year from now. In Europe, many places are already a little bit over this COVID thing, but it's, um, it's really the, the, the ultimately the, how to manage the, the densities of the places. Uh, so we have been working with, with other universities, University of Helsinki. The first thing was Tiere Kulma Science Corner, which actually created a platform for the, the universe open, first open platform from the central campus of University of Helsinki. And now we are working with them to create a network, network of co-working places inside university premises. Meaning that, that at this moment, this, for example, this building is owned by one department and controlled by one department. 
but but later on we are going to establish a co-working place which is usable for any stakeholders in the universe. They could be internal or external stakeholders. And this model has been kind of extended to the bio, biotech campus and health hospital campus in the University of Helsinki as well. Um, and so my, my background in MIT, we work in Kendall Square uh, in Cambridge uh, with the, the, the MIT, with, with co-working operators, and with actually quite a big development project. And what we are doing is the same thing. We're analyzing the available assets. What could we share? And even um, if I come back to Olga, your previous question, what new markets is enabled? There are new players that could actually offer uh, meeting rooms or gyms or others to larger audience as a part of the ecosystem. And, 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 and we, one of our biggest clients there is, is company called Akamai, uh, who controls, I think, one fifth of the internet traffic in the world. Uh, so they have this uh, name server down there somewhere. That's something I had never seen. But nevertheless, they have a building with 68 meeting rooms. They build that for their own purposes. And now we, they realize that, okay, they don't need that. They could actually use, they want to be part of the ecosystem here in this campus, but they don't need to own and control everything by themselves. We work in Sweden with Akademiska, who is the biggest property owners of uh, university campuses in Sweden. So we are now working in, in four universities, Karolinska Institute, Ume University, Örebro, and Chalmers to develop the campus as service platforms. Uh, and this ongoing work that actually we are, we already done a first uh, kind of a simulation with Örebro and now we are working with Karolinska and, and Chalmers. We work with, uh, I've, I've been in Tonji, I've been professor in there for, for five years and we are developing, this is Tonji campus, the, the sideline of that. And, and if you know anything about Chinese university campuses, they are all surrounded by, by war. You go inside, you are in the academic area, you go outside, you are in the city. And what we are doing is to identify this one street with city of Shanghai uh, as a service platform. So we are installing university labs, uh, kind of university premises, but also asking local business people to offer these labs. They can manage the co-working place, they can manage the, the fab labs, they can manage the, the new type of, uh, how could I say, innovation labs between university and industry. One of the most successful cases is called Sound Lab. It's a, it's a sponsorship of one of the biggest sound. Uh, first of all, there's a guru in sound development in, in China. Then there are companies, then there are universities. And together they create this uh, one sound lab that we manage as a part of this ecosystem. So this is something I call street as a service. So this is what we work with in Montreal, in, in Canada. Uh, it's a very simple thing. We, we have big governmental offices. We, are, we try to understand where the people are living and what are the open resources in, in Montreal. And there are one, 110 co-working places in Canada, sorry, in, in Montreal. Uh, and, and here are governmental offices and we try to match them uh, together. So where people are, how could these offices actually utilize the environment that is already there? And in order to do that, we also need to match where people are living. So these are postal codes of the, 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 the workers in one big um, governmental office. And we match them. This is very oversimplified picture, but if I explain that to you, so you see that these red lines lead to this one ecosystem. We match what is the closest point that you could go? If you live here, you go there. So if you live here, you go this place. If you live here, you go this place. If you live here, you go this place. This is kind of a maybe even stupid like uh, view. It's very simple, simple things. But in order to achieve this, we need to change the strategy of the office. We need to straight, change the mindset that, okay, why do they force people if they live here to go this place, if they could use the government office of this? So meaning that we, uh, if I go back to my, my history, I'm an architect. I was teaching the school that uh, about the modernism or functionalism, that one building has one function, hospital is hospital, office is office, school is school. Now I'm, now I'm saying that I want to destroy that. I want this actualism or something that it's, 
the idea is based on actions, not functions. So we need to have work meeting rooms. We need to have co-working spaces. So why don't we give up from the old fashioned idea that it's, it's a building? Why, why don't we think about that? If I need a meeting room, I could use this government office instead of going my government office. These are very simple things, but the, the barriers are inside the system. They are not maybe uh, so easy to, 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 to see. And the outcomes of that, they're, 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 as I mentioned, they're, they're quite many, but it's a vitality. So we, we increase the liveliness. We, we decrease the, 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 the kind of, uh, or we increase the sustainability. Uh, we increase the, the amount of stakeholders in, in the ecosystem. Um, and, and it even economically makes more money because we don't need to manage, the companies don't need to, to manage all these different resources, they could use them. Um, and it increased, this is the other, it increased the utilization rate quite a lot. Um, and, uh, but it, it's a systemic approach. It's a really to, to think about that in a big scale. And that's actually what part of Curry, what you were asking before, what are the obstacles? The obstacles is, is changing the mindset from the product to system in this field. And we have been talking with Kari many times that this is this might not sound too futuristic from the point of view of uh, of uh, other industries, but in the point of view of physical industry in, in software, this is quite new. Um, and if I think about the the kind of simplified result, it's like what what this this enables is adaptive change. Suddenly there is pandemic, COVID. So this flexible model adapts you to change that. You, you optimize your use and, and you build more sustainable environments. Um, and these are quite big goals um, in, in that. And also if, if we put this in the, the, the sustainable development goals, uh, we could actually measure how this in the long run affects to quite many of these goals by offering more quality education to the, it's, a, it's like a education ecosystem. Uh, it, it creates the, the economic growth by, by creating new markets. Um, it creates new infrastructure, the, the in, industry to, to innovate. It, it kind of reduces inequalities by connecting different stakeholders together. It's more sustainable, it's more responsible, and actually it affects the climate change because we don't need to build so much. Uh, it increased uh, the, the, well, strong institutions because they are not anymore dependent of the, the traditional uh, assets. And it, it really creates new partnerships. It cre creates what I like to say, uh, environment of value co-creation, that different stakeholders to create value together um, by changing the dynamics, by changing the operating system, how they, how they do it. Um, and, and this was my, my last slide. So I'd like to say thank you. And, and, and I think it was one hour, hopefully not too, too much load for you, but we could, we could spend the last of the time by for discussion or, or any comments or questions I'm happy to answer. Okay, so thank you. <laughs> Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Um, thank you very much. And uh, I think we have questions from the audience. I'm sorry because I'm in the new office and there is a noise uh, after me. I can do nothing with this. So I'm putting my, just muting my microphone. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I have some questions. I see some questions here in the chat. So should I just try to answer them? So what can I... Yeah, yeah. Uh, again, uh, thank you for the lecture. The materials are, are vast. The, a, a vast couple of materials to look for. And I have a question for you. Uh, do you collaborate with PR and advertising agencies uh, in order to explain such complex projects to the stakeholders and uh, final user audience? Or it is done in-house by university and research facilities? That's a very good question, and, and uh, you get my pain point. Uh, for sure, we, we, we try to simplify this message for the companies quite a lot. 
and our basic kind of selling argument is that you could you could have more for, for the supply side that this is more sustainable this is more easier to use um hey one question do you do you hear me well right now yes because i see some delay here and that happens sometimes with my computer um I don't know why, but if you could hear me now, uh, I can everything's hear okay for the moment. Everything's okay for the moment. Yeah, we hear you well. Mm -hmm. yeah, hear you. Okay, uh, because it's it's maybe it's my my screen that is is lagging, but it uh, and then just let, let me know if if I need to reopen this because that's a bit help. But any anyway, uh, uh, so. Uh, ways to, to communicate this because this will challenge the, the management this will challenge the, the traditional ways of, of doing business but money is one good argument this will save money uh, resources are one good argument this will save resources and innovation is one good argument this will enable them to work in more innovative ways to, to work with the stakeholders in new ways uh, and as I mentioned before we have these problems before COVID-19, but now everybody's trying to find out what are the new ways of actually, what is the future after this pandemic? And in some way, this has been helping our work. It's the only way to think about that. We think about our environment, um, as this platform for, for new type of activities. Um, but constantly, even today, I was, work, I was working with, uh, with one advertisement agency to try to think about how could we simplify this message? Because the message, the idea is not complicated. It's just a way uh, how to make it happen, uh, which is, um, let me say, more complicated. Was that okay for you? Yeah, thanks. Thanks for the answer. So <laughs> I, see, I, see, I see pains and where I can also help uh, in some worldwide experience. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you, you get the point because it's really, uh, it's kind of, uh, sometimes I say that's a joke that I, I read uh, uh, Cervantes Don Quixote about uh, fighting, <laughs> fighting against windmills because this is really um, a new approach. And even though it, it don't need to be rocket science, but it's a new for, for many of the stakeholders. So that, that's why I, this presentation was, I, I was thinking that I could be more uh, in details here, but usually for companies, we need to, to have very clear. Now we are more, a little bit losing you. Sorry, Yarmo, could you repeat it, please? Because we don't hear you well. Uh, let me let me sign in again. Could you hear that? No, now we hear you well. Mm -hmm. But but I know this happens to me yesterday. I don't know why. But maybe I sign in again, uh, and then we could talk. Is that okay? Yeah. So one minute. Olga, I have a question for you. What do you think if you think the unit city approach and what you are building there? Have you same type of thinking there that you connect to different places and, and people and that type of thing? Or is it a good idea to develop further? Yes, I think we have something like that, uh, but it's uh, moving, you know, we don't have the solid strategy, it seems to me, and uh, things changes here, and uh, a lot of activities, a lot of companies, uh, a lot of everything, you know, and uh, the uh, uh, place for living and place for work and place for just for pleasure. Uh, for having fun and that's all. And everything is very close to each other. 
And I think that we can add some more activities, new types of, and even um, even transport here, some some kind of uh, common sharing, something like that. Uh, we don't. I don't see Yarmo right now. He is. He left out. and is coming back. I think. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We have something like that in unit, and many people uh, from our group visited unit last week. Uh, and I would like them to share their maybe experience and uh, impressions about this visit because we had uh, something like a small excursion uh, during the, uh, the this visit. Um, so, guys, uh, who was uh, who were uh, who, who were at the unit last week? Yeah, you, Katerina, someone else. I don't see your pictures at the moment, but uh, who can uh, open the screen and open camera, please do it to communicate with our experts. So uh, I, I was visiting Unit City uh, a lot, uh, so I see the implications of all we've talked about uh, during this lecture, all the lecture uh, talked uh, and uh, currently, I'm uh, in Krivirich industrial city, and I see a problem that such ecosystems, such uh, uh, complexes as Unit City, uh, aren't a normal thing for the Ukrainian regions. And basically, what we have, uh, what we have here now in Krivirich is uh, a giant uh, factory. And the whole infrastructure is, uh, and the whole work and job for the population is, uh, uh, you know, to to uh, leave Ukraine in order to have some money or to work for the factory. And such projects as Unit City is can can be, as I see, uh, a huge relief on the regions, especially former Soviet industrial regions. But uh, that uh, there are no such a practice, mostly because the local business uh, just don't understand how these ecosystems, how these complex systems work. And the problem of explanation of the uh, basically of the profitable of profitability and uh, effectiveness, not efficiency, but effectiveness of such systems, such projects, such projects, such such complexity is a uh, uh, subject to discuss and maybe to build some more uh, materials and promotion uh, in order to uh, units such as unit city to become some some kind of an, a normal normal uh, thing in uh, a whole country and maybe worldwide we have noticed that it takes time to uh, that these ecosystems evolve and it's a lot of about the people more than the buildings and uh, if it's knowledge intensive intensive place where there's a lot of knowledge which can be shared and compiled and done something outside of the players together then it's easier but it's also in finland difficult in old folks but industrial cities or or, or places to 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 get that type of ecosystem running. So the best places are the five major cities in Finland only, or six major cities. And the smaller are not so you know, dynamic and dense enough to do things. So I understand quite well the challenges, but I believe that, that it starts from the people and those who want to do something. Jarmo is trying to get in. But I don't see him right now. Maybe ah, now he's putting it. He does the same what you did in the before the event. So he has to open again oh. his computer because yeah. it, he said that uh, Zoom asked for password first, and then it crashed. It crashed. So now he is restarting his computer. Yeah, some technical issues, and uh, Kari and. Um, do you think that Finland have enough uh, strength to make uh, the hugest ecosystem maybe in Europe, in this Northern Europe, for this uh, common sharing and sustainability? 
I think that one thing what what Jarmo mentioned there was the word of trust. And we I think that we are one of those countries where people still trust on the systems and systems trust on the people. And that was the case also with our the COVID system. We have a government which is full of ladies. Now the, all the ma major people in, in the in the uh, they, they are ladies, and it was just yesterday reflected that how people are, uh, they are not angry for that, how the government did the COVID thing. They are, they, they like it. It, 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 they were good. And that was quite a lot about that, that we, we have trust. And if we think now the ecosystems and that, that they are socially, you know, socially constructed actually, not by the companies itself, but through people and because we have that trust level still quite high i think that in the global rankings the trust is is finland is one of the most higher highest of that so that makes it that perhaps we have the possibilities to do that uh, and then of course because we are a small economy that it's much more easier only five million people so we know basically each other's <laughs> So it's much more easier to work together if you uh, relate that to what happened in bigger countries. So I, I trust that we could do that, but we have to do a lot of things together still. And, and sometimes the SDGs, the Sustainable Development Goals are so high level objectives that people don't you know, understand how they could contribute to those. So we have to bring them more on the bottom level. Now Yarmo is there back. <laughs> yeah, sorry yes. about this uh, delay, yeah. Uh, yeah, if, if there's any questions or comments or things, I could I could be in help. Yarmo, we are talking about unit city. It's something like, uh, yeah, ecosystem, small ecosystem in the center of the city in Kiev. And uh, people are sharing their thoughts about that and impressions. And also we are talking about Finland uh, as a huge country with good potential to show other mm -hmm. countries uh, how to build this ecosystem. Yeah. And um, well, what else? I like that library of common sharing. Kari, you know about that, that we visited. And some more maybe examples do we have uh, in Finland like that. But this one, I think it's uh, the, the hugest one, yeah. Mm, yes, okay. Um, but this, as, as I mentioned in Finland, um, this was possible because of uh, we, we know the connections, we have the trust, network of trust there. But this is totally scalable approach to, to any place in the world. But it re requires new thinking and, and a new type of um, approach. Uh, and many people, let me say in this way, these problems, one of the things I found difficult that many people don't see these problems in their everyday life. Problems really is the problem of physical environment because they don't touch us so easily. We see we see them in in the uh, kind of uh, in the, the experience and, and and emotional level that uh, that companies once they interact with each other, where should they meet? Where should they work? Where should how could they they enable this more flexible and and, and open environment together? Um, and in this case. I was, uh, if I go back to the Montreal for, for, for a second. So now we are working with uh, companies like Deloitte, uh, organizations like Ubisoft, uh, universities like McGill and AEC, uh, government offices, which are all kind of uh, interested of sharing their own premises to others together. So why I'm say saying this is not uh, just I'm not saying this because it's some futur futuristic thing. It's a real life that enables many players to come together. And that's a difficulty. That's a difficulty. There are many countries, like in China, one of the, even, even we do things in China. So we did the first school there as well. I didn't mention that, but we have this example there. But China, Chinese culture is very competitive. Everybody's competing against each other. That meaning that we need to build our own castles. Uh, and they, one of the things lacking there is collaboration. And what I'm really pushing is collaboration rather than competitiveness only. Uh, 
by the way, Olga, how do you see the culture in Ukraine? Is it more competitive or more collaborative or something between? Well, I think it's competitive <laughs> at the mm-hmm. moment. Yeah, because we are trying to make this collaboration and sometimes it works. Uh, but um, different opportunities and uh, much more people here, you know. Uh, it's a huge country, actually. And uh, different uh, um, positions, you know. Uh, so sometimes it's hard, yeah, maybe to share something, especially when we are talking about something like um, precious equipment uh, or a territory or something else. So for us, it's a new practice. But um, we are trying to do this, and sometimes we like it. Mm. Uh, our group visited a um, small hotel. It was last, last Friday, yeah? It was a small hotel um, not far from the city. It's 20 kilometers from Kiev. And it's a uh, common sharing. It's co-living. And um, the host is very friendly there, and everything is very beautiful there. And um, I think everybody likes it. No, guys, tell us. <laughs> yeah, Pasha, Medina, личность. Many people told that it was great for this co-living and common sharing of life. You know, sharing of territory and sharing of mm. even garden. You share your garden with someone. And and one, way to think of, one way to think about this is uh, sharing is one point, uh, but uh, I would like to say to companies that we are creating accessibilities, that you get access to resources. Because many companies are afraid of sharing. They say, oh, we don't want to share our things. But once we change the same thing, that we create, ac- we get access more resources. They understand it. It's basically the same thing, but two sides of that. And, uh, that, that we create more opportunities um, for, for people. And, and, and the co-living, one of the, the, the breakthrough that we try to do is that these co-living uh, things or, or co, co, even co-working or, or all these, they're more like consumer side. They are, they are touching us as a person. But we want to touch institutions. We want to change the way we build hospitals, we, the way we build offices, the way we build corporations. Or, or, or schools or universities. And that's much more difficult to change the mindset of the, the organization than change the mindset of the individual. But, but isn't it true, yeah. so that you have to start from the individuals because the institutions don't change by their own. So that uh, for example, when we did this, I have been pioneering the e-learning things from beginning of the 90s. And it was, we had the technologies and all the functionalities 25 years ago, but it was quite mm. difficult to push it. So we had these, the first people, then projects, then departments, then, you know, processes, et cetera, mainstream activities. And then the, in the last level, sixth level, level, it was the system in the company mm. which you had to change. But you had to go the, all those, you know, steps before you could change the system. That's a good question because it's, uh, it's, it's like that and it's not like that. I mean, in this case, you need to change the strategy. So we, we need to involve the, the high level decision makers to say that, you, would you like to give this power to your, your, your workers, to people? And in that way, it's kind of HR challenge that we could think about in the future, this could be an advantage for the companies or organization that, that I could say that here is your environment, here is your city, I give it to you. You choose what you want to do. And it's the same way that, that now companies say that, that they have this uh, HR approach that you got free gym or free whatever. In the future, they could say you have the, the opportunity of using the city in new ways. But what I'm saying, it has the top-down approach and the bottom-up. The bottom-up, the people make it happen, but it won't happen, unfortunately, without the top-down, without somebody changing the approach of, let's try this, let's do something different. Let's utilize the environment rather than building it down low. Uh, but but you're absolutely right. People make it happen. People make it happen, um, and 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 that's that that's one approach that we have been taking. To think about that's an HR point of view, that we give freedom freedom of choice to people uh, through this kind of approach, and not and we, the company. Yeah. Thinking that there's interesting things 
in social adaptive systems thinking, for example, in Finland, CITRA, which is the innovation fund by government, is promoting that, and I've been working with that 20 years, so that to think that type of new complexity way of thinking and chasing them into governance models some way, have we been thinking that, you know, social mm. adaptive systems? For sure, yeah, but, but in our case, I, I, we try to, to stay in the operating system, environment system, um, and, uh, and by saying that we change that, that will lead to the, the, the new systems in social level and other levels as well. Yeah, but then you need, as you said, you need that the upper level, the sea level people should understand that and push it down also. Yes, uh, but it's uh, like I was saying, we are working now with Adidas and Nike, one of the biggest uh, players in, 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 in free time or sports. And the reason I mentioned both, because one, say, if, if we like to use it with our internal kind of workers, other, other will say, wow, wow, they are, are they competing against us? We need to do this as well. As a, as a giving kind of a perk to the, the, the workers in there. So in that way, the impacts are much more difficult. I could, I could bluntly say that the impacts are much more diverse than I could ever imagine. It just happens if you change some part of the system. I have to remember 15 years, a little bit over 15 years ago, I worked with the Connect Corporation, which is the biggest, second biggest elevator company in the world from Finland. Mm. And, and they, did, they had wonderful e-learning and uh, digital work uh, pilot inside the company. But it, it, it wouldn't go to the mainstream because the upper level people didn't want it. But what, what happened, I think, 15, 20 years ago was that one director from Nokia Corporation, Matti Alahuhta, came from Nokia and was the CEO of the Connect Corporation. And because Nokia had, had used this digital communities approach from 90s already, it was must for them. What happened in one night, the whole strategy of the, of the Connect Corporation changed because Matti Alahuhta, the new mm -hmm. CEO, had experience that in Nokia that it works and then it changed. But before that, it was impossible. Yes, yeah, that's the uh, thing because some, some of the things are, I mean, even here are lots of issues that people are afraid of, of adapt because it's, uh, they, they look uh, the supervisors. And, and one of the challenges that we are facing that nobody's expecting this. No, no single company will expect that this is the way that we, they could actually be more adaptive. They are looking at other markets. Uh, and every time we need to say, okay, what if you think about your problem in a new way? But that's, I, I think uh, that will going to change as, as well quite soon in the same way that what ha happened with Uber and Airbnb in consumer markets. Once we have track record, once we have these things that are changing, um, and, and again, I'm saying that we are not the, the, the only answer. We're just one, one small part of that, but it's, um, it's still kind of a... Jarmo, I think that there is a, a question okay. from Katarina. Please. Okay, Kari, Jarmo, we have some more questions from the yes. audience. Please. It seems to me yes. that Volodymyr is trying to ask, and then uh, Katerina. Yes. Dear friends, please. So uh, the another one question uh, from me is uh, about building uh, big ecosystems uh, based on smaller clusters. Mm -hmm. Is there any research or practice that uh, 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 that is able to produce uh, smaller chunks then evolves into something bigger in time? or mostly it depends on vast resources to be built efficiently? If I, if I try to answer that, it's, um, first of all, we don't, the big ecosystem is a consequence of every small player, that everybody looks their own uh -huh. benefit and everybody looks to how could I be more sustainable? How could I be more sustainable economically or, or socially, whatever? And, and by putting these small ecosystems together, we got the big ecosystem. But I, I never ever think that we could change the world by, 
by by pro just proposing a very big thing. Uh -huh, uh -huh. But the reason why every single, for example, school in Shanghai only there are two thousand high schools, and it's very dynamic. It's very scalable and, and and kind of modular solution. If we could change one school, the same approach applies to any school or one university. In France, where I'm working, uh, there are eighty eight zero university campuses. And we are now working with Sergi Pontoise in, in close to Paris. If we, if we could change one campus, the same concept applies to any campus. So if I answer your question correctly, uh, if we do this in small scale, the same concept, the same logic is applicable to bigger scale, but we need to attract every, every player once, uh, kind of uh, one at a time. So we could not go to, even the city of Espoo, we have working with them a long time, I could not go to, to them and say, okay, let's change the whole city. I just need to say, okay, let's change this small piece, that small piece, this small piece. And then it became a bigger ecosystem because they all understand this is beneficial. I don't know if that answers your question at all. Uh, yes, uh, I see, thank you. Uh, and also I've uh, uh, turned my attention on uh, environmental design blueprint in your white paper. So mm -hmm. I think, yeah. My question is answered. I just uh, don't uh, don't fast enough to consume all the information <laughs> in parallel <laughs> from you uh, alive and and from the papers. Thank you. You you answered my question. Thank, Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you. So as I mentioned, I work in Tonji in Shanghai, and I'm a director of environmental design program. Uh, and this is what I what I'm trying to push there in Finland. I'm an architect, and we have the idea of urban planning. But this is more like environmental design. This is uh, something in between. Uh, and that's why I'm very happy to think about this in new ways of uh, planning, or systemic ways of planning how we use environment. Uh, and my architectural background is kind of way back for me. I, I, I don't want to go back to that traditional profession anymore. Just as an option. Uh, hi, I have a question also. Yes. Uh, my question is related to city studies. Uh, so okay. what kind what kind of algorithms do you use for spatial distribution, for example, when you search for a new building for your network? Uh, how do you factor in the street network, public transport accessibility? Because you know, in the city, uh, distance is not in a straight line. So uh, do you factor this in? Or is it all no, no, normal? networks if so what parameters do you control for maybe you can share some links or just point me in the right direction thank you yes i, I could share some links later uh, but it, the, the be brief uh, some of the algorithms we have to, to invent ourselves so we we basically the basic idea that we change the, the square meters to hours so we need to think about what are the available hours in the city so if we look the location one location a I could say it has hours, it has time left on Monday afternoon and Tuesday evening. So that will go to our de de database that, okay, this is the available slot, availabilities. And with the AI, we could match these availabilities uh, in, in very complicated kind of demand. Uh, so it's a, I'm not expert in, 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 in algorithms, but I'm, I, I'm expert in this concept. And, and I could say that it's a, uh, let me go back to the, the like city of Helsinki. So we did the, the one simulation for them for two schools. And they were saying, oh, there's no space for this place or there's no space for, for this gym or other uh, for us to, to use. And we say there are hours, there is no space. There are hours in Monday evening or there are hours in Tuesday morning that you could use. So the crucial thing that we are not looking the 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 area, the, the square meters, we are looking at the time, the time slots, and we create accessibility to them. So every time we are looking at the, the, the resources, it's essential to understand availabilities and, and the price. I mean, they could adjust in price. But basically, then we are using open, database, op, open databases, the real estate databases, the GIS data. So it's quite complicated uh, combination of different things. And that's why um, I could, I could even, um, our time is, is almost, or actually, uh, 
Andy, but I could I could show it. We have five minutes. How the the simulator, for example, works in real life. Do we have still time? Yeah, if you want. To. Uh, Jarmo, sorry, you could tell also that in Finland we have a lot of open data and easy access to GIS data and so on. Maybe in Ukraine it's not so easy yet. Uh, what is G um, GIS? That... Sorry, what is GIS? Uh, Jarmo can explain. <laughs> the geolocation data. So it's a it's a location data of the, the what is where. But let me show you. Let me share you very briefly this uh, one version. Let me say. You see it now? You so see anything? It, uh, so the database uh, has the uh, information about uh, how much time does it take to reach from point A to point B, right? Yes, you, you see this uh, screen now? Yes. Okay, yeah. So this is just a screenshot of the, the, the our simulation. So you see that, for example, a company with 500 people so they have mobile workers, most of them mobile workers. Let me put it this way. If I put all this to zero, you see the, the, lock, the amount of square meters that they need is almost 6,000. But if I, if I increase the amount of mobile workers, the, the square meters are, are going down. I mean, but then if I increase the amount of how much they could use the network, it goes even further down. So I could put 500 people half of the size, if I utilize the network, uh, you see what is happening. I click this point and the simulator is calculating uh, using the environment. Uh, in, this is happening in real life. Uh, it, it, it analyzed the environment. What is there uh, in the city of Helsinki? You see it here and, and it should give us the overview. This is the network that the company could use. And this is not visual, this is not a concept or just some uh, how can I say that um, this is not just uh, some wishful thinking. This is what is really opening these companies. They could use these spaces tomorrow. So I could show them that, that uh, they could put, so here are the numbers, um, they could put their, their, their own premises half of the size that is traditional way if they use these resources which are available for them. Yeah, and so is, in order uh, to get really this data, impressive. sorry. This is really impressive system, thank you. Okay, yeah, but my, my point is that in order to do this, we need to combine different type of data, local data, location data, scheduling, uh, all these things. It hasn't, nobody has done this before in this way. I mean, there are, all these data exist. I mean, they are calendars, they are schedules, they are locations, they are places, they are rents, they are money. But in this case, you and, and each of these location could be then seen, okay, what is the, the the, the hearts are how many people are living. And, and then we could say, we could actually adjust the, the, how could I say, I could even put user reviews here that, okay, there, there need to be good quality spaces, etc. But again, this was just showing you that, that this is happening in real life and, and, and real time. And we have covered the, the metropolitan area, Helsinki. We are now doing the same in Amsterdam, in Portland, and, and uh, we are quite far in, in Montreal, in Canada already. And this, this is a bit time consuming uh, work because some of the data we need to collect manually. Uh, but this is also enabling totally new business models. And again, uh, and this is like pointing curry again, each of these locations is like urban meal. Each of these locations is like, like independent provider of, of a place that you could use. But, but here in this picture, each of these locations is, is con, uh, confirmed place for us. So we could use them. I said the link of open data in Finland is Avoin Data. If you look mm. there, we, we have a lot of open data resources where you can then pick up the information which you can then put in your systems. That's one part. And then what I'm going to ask about the open uh, knowledge society thing also. We have a lot of activities where we share information. And actually, though, we are some way global forerunners in those activities. And it makes it much more easier to work here because you can use the data from many, many sources. I don't know how much do you use open data, Jarmo? 
GIS data and all that in your systems? As much as we can, as, as much as we can. But the reason I emphasize the, the next pilot that we are doing in Montreal in Canada, that Canada has very much similar open data policies than Nordic countries. I don't know, but Ukraine or China is very close. Even in France, it's different, but France is part of Europe, it makes it easier. But Canada especially, they have lots of uh, open data and that makes uh, us our work easier. But again, uh, if, I, if I answer your, your question, uh, Kate, Katejana. Um, uh, yes, yes, uh, it, thank you. It means that it, it's a collaboration of, of combination of different type of algorithms. It's not one single thing. Uh, may I uh, reflect a little bit, Jarmo and Kari? Yes. Uh, I'm half Russian, half Finnish. That's why I know what is happening in Ukraine quite much. And uh, a lot of these data are not available yet. But Ukraine is developing very quickly now in this mm. this uh, data um, data progress. So they have even a, a, a digital minister or digital development minister now <laughs> so i think they are going in this direction and it will be possible soon but maybe not yet you need to ask digital experts mm. about this uh, geolocation data but if i if i comment on that what you just said vladimir um, i think many of these things are available and possible very soon so i don't yes, think yes, about i agree anymore very soon. This is, right yes. this is not something that will happen after 10 years this will happen in any case in a couple of years. I'm, I'm quite convinced, not maybe because of me or because of our company, but this makes sense. This is the most sustainable way that you could actually build the environments to, to create accessibility to them. Yes, thank you. Thank you. So, yeah, and, and, and so this, uh, this is something that, uh, and I think even in, in China, in many places that Finally, we are understanding that, that by using environment in new ways, because we have the technology, we could be much more sustainable than before. And, but this, this talk was not about sustainability, it was about innovation, but this same thing happens that we enable people to come together in new ways. And, and that's why I'm calling this innovation environment or ecosystem it's not the innovation as such. I mean, the innovation then happens between the, the interaction, but we create the environment that enables better ways to, 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 to be people or put people together. Smart overlays, <laughs> smart overlays. Yes, in some way, I mean, I don't like to use the city, uh, the, sorry, the, 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 the name smart city, but it's a smarter way of using city. It's a smart use, it's done, not, done, not the technology as such. Agree, agree, totally agree. Okay, good. So, thank you, Jarmo. Yes, you... Jarmo, that was great, and Kari also. Thank you. As usual, it's very pleasant to hear you because you have so many ideas and thoughts and philosophical terms to, to speak about. I know that we can speak for hours. <laughs> but this is pretty good. And, and, and Kari and Olga, you have the, the shareable version of that. And, yes. uh, and one, thing, one thing I could say, I don't know about your backgrounds and institutions, but I mentioned these simulations a couple of times. And we are doing, as our company kind of approach, we are doing these simulations basically for big institutions for free. And by by saying wow. institution could be uh, university, it could be, but it needs to be a big occupier. The reason we do that for free, because that's the best way to, to show them the opportunities. And if you have connections to any U Ukrainian uh, university or big organization, even government, this will help them without any commitment to understand. Uh, because we, and that's part of maybe uh, some of you asked me how much we use the advertisement or, or kind of marketing expertise. Uh, we find out that the best way to actually push this forward is to, to, to go to local context. So this makes sense. This is the way that you could actually benefit your, your environment um, in, in your local context. And in order to do this for free, we just need this uh, basic information about what is there, and how it's used, like like basic, um, and they don't need to be in detail. 
But that was just you you to think about. I don't need to push that, but that's an opportunity. It's like you were in MIT Media Lab. It was Necroponte who said, demo or die. Then it was deploy or die. Now it's disrupt or die. So you something have to like that. It. Yes. <laughs> yeah, because if you actually propose something new, it's 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 no use of just pushing it. You need to show them and, and make them see their own eyes. Yeah. But I thank you from my side so that if I give to Olga. And yeah, thank you guys very much because uh, today it's not very pleasant to speak from here because you, I don't know, do, do you hear this noise behind me? Uh, it's very frustrating actually. <laughs> so the stage is yours. I'm putting my microphone off and I thank you once again. Um, it was pleasant speech actually. Okay, thank you. So thank you and see you, you next thank Wednesday you. then. Bye. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.